multiple integrals ma here multiple integrals means double and triple integrals together we can call them as multiple integrals already we discussed about uh, double integrals now we are going to discuss what is triple integral how how to evaluate a triple integral that one generally multiple integral means a double or triple integral triple integral is known as multiple integrals so here we are going to discuss especially about triple integral one how to evaluate a triple integral as i said earlier triple integral means actually integral means limit of a sum here triple integral means here whenever if you want to evaluate a value of a three dimensional figure like q in that case we introduce triple integral three dimensions are there x y z so like that here triple integral will be like this for example triple integral some function of x y z dz dy dx is there here we may have z limits like z1 z2 here we may have y limits like y1 y2 here x limits like x1 x2 so like this the triple integral we will represent actually we use this triple integral to evaluate values of three dimensional figures like q rectangular parallel pipe a rectangular shaped box these are all values we are going to evaluate using triple integral but how to evaluate this triple integral before going to know how to evaluate triple integral first we need to identify we need to discuss about the limits of z and y and x here the limits of three variables sometimes you may have as constants one possibility whenever limits of z y x are constants then we can integrate in any way in any order there is no order for the integration whenever the three variable limits are constants next other cases for example z limits here i am discussing about the limits of each variable first i am discussing z here z may have two chances z may have limits as constants it may have constant limits as i said if it has constant limits no need to discuss about order of integration what is the other case it may have the limits in terms of x y in terms of x comma y so z is a variable which may have limits in terms of x y means z equal to x minus y to x plus y z equal to x plus 2y to x minus 2y if we have like that we can identify that limits are z limits the limits in terms of x y are easily identified as they are limits of z next coming to y possibility y possibility also same they may have constant limits or already z limits are in terms of x y then y limits may be in terms of x you cannot get y limits in terms of z already z limits are in two variables are constant then y limit may be constant or in terms of x one variable so what is left over now x so here also x may be constant there is no alternate case because y limits are in terms of x so x cannot be in terms of y and z so these are the possibilities z y and x has for example the first case i said if z limits are constant y limits are constant x limits are constant then no need to discuss about order of integration any way we can discuss that means we can integrate first with respect to z next with respect to y next with respect to x or first with respect to y next with respect to z next with respect to x or first with respect to x next with respect to y next with respect to z we cannot discuss about the order of integration in any order if you integrate you can evaluate triple integration whenever x y z limits are in constants for example z limits are in terms of x y 
y limits are in terms of x, x limits are constant. Is, for example, this is the order, then you have to integrate first with respect to z, next with respect to y, at the end with respect to x. Because if you integrate this integrand with respect to z first, what happens? After integrating with respect to z, you are going to substitute upper limit value and lower limit values in the place of z after integration. So in the place of z, if you write, for example, x plus y, y minus x. For example, after integration, you got z. If you write in the place of z, upper limit, uh, which is in terms of x, y, lower limit, which is in terms of x, y, then the integrand completely will be in terms of x, y. So, after integrating with respect to z, after substituting upper and lower limit, the integrand may be in terms of x, y only. Next, y limits are in terms of x, then integrate with respect to y. So, if you integrate with respect to y, what happens? After integrating with respect to y, you are going to write in the place of y, x terms. Wherever you will have y, there you will write the limits in terms of x. Then what happens? The complete integrand will be in x. So at the final stage, you cannot find y and z terms. The total integrand is in x. Then you can easily integrate that one with respect to x because only x terms left over. Now integrate with respect to x. After integration, substitute the upper limits and lower limit you will get triple integral value. Actually, the triple integral is evaluated by repeated integration. Repeated integration. Repeated integration means integrating repeatedly, first with respect to z, next with respect to y, next with respect to x. So, as I said earlier, how to integrate triple integral if the limits of z in terms of x, y, y limits are in terms of x, x limits are constant. Like this, you are going to evaluate. For example, z limits are in terms of x, y, z1. And z2 is some other function in terms of x, y. z2 is f of x, y. z2 is g of x, y. So f of x, y, g of x, y. Similarly, y1 is some function of x y2 is some function of x. Next, x will be, x limits will be constant, x1 equal to some constant, x2 is also some constant. Then, we are going to integrate first with respect to z, dz we are going to do first. Because z limits are in terms of x1. Next with respect to y. At the end, we are going to integrate with respect to x. So, the limits of x are constants. That's why we are evaluating at the end. So, one point you need to remember ma, on small technique. Which variable has constant limits? With respect to that variable, you need to do at the end, last integration. For example, y has constant limits, you have to integrate at the end with respect to y. For example, z has constant limits, you need to integrate at the end with respect to z. But maximum possibility of limits is this one only. z may have constant or in terms of x, y. y may have constant limits or in terms of x. x may have the limits as constants. Are you clear, ma? This is the order of integration in triple integration. Whenever integrand is given, we have to write that integrand here. For example, f of x, y, z is integrand. So, that function you need to evaluate. For example, if you want to evaluate a volume or area, then the integrand is 1. 1 dz dy dx. If we keep here the integrand f of x, y, z is 1, then we are going to evaluate the value of three-dimensional figure. If function is given, that value we are going to evaluate. 
Are you clear, ma? How to evaluate triple integral? So evaluate this triple integral, ma. Integral 0 to 1, 0 to 1 minus x, 0 to 1 minus x minus y, dx, dy, dz. So before going to evaluate the integral, first you need to identify the limits. That is, that plays key role, ma, to evaluate the triple integral. Identify the limits. Simply had given like this, there is no mention about the limits. These limits are z limits, these limits are y, these limits are x, like that he didn't given. So we have to identify the limits of z, limits of y, limits of x. For that I had uh, given one small technique ma, while evaluating, while explaining triple integral, now again I am repeating, how to identify the limits. So this plays key role to evaluate triple integral. So to identify the limits, if you can identify the limits, if some limits are in terms of x, y, they are definitely limits of z. The small technique is, the variable which you won't find in that limits, that will be the limits of that variable. Here, 0 to 1 minus x minus y is there. So here, you are not finding z. That is the technique, they are limits of z. So these are limits of z. So left over x and y. Now, to find out which limits are x, which limits of y, the same technique which I used to identify z, I am going to apply for y and x. What I said, in the limits, now we need to identify limits of x or y. So in the limits, you are not getting y. Forget about z, z is over. In these limits, you are not getting y. These limits are in terms of x. The limits in terms of x are limits of y. The limits in terms of x are limits of y. So at the end, these limits are x limits. So like this, one can easily identify the limits of the variables, z variable limits, y variable limits, x variable limits. So the limits in terms of x, y are limits of z, the limits in terms of x are limits of y, the left over limits, constant limits are limits of x. Now what is next? After identifying limits of variables, next you need to identify the order of integration. Order of integration means, first, with respect to x or with respect to y or with respect to z, we need to integrate. In which order we need to integrate? The order of integration. The order of integration is, first you need to integrate variable limits. With respect to the variable, which has variable limits? Variable limits means, z limits are in terms of x, y. They are called variable limits y limits are in terms of x, they are called variable limits. But x limits are constant, 0, 1. They are called constant limits. The small hint what I said, what I am saying now also, integrate at the end with respect to one variable which has constant limits. Now which variable has constant limits? x variable. So, with respect to x, we need to do at the end, this is 3. The order of integration, if you give 1, 2, 3, this will be 3, third order. Last. Next coming to the remaining 2. Now, z has limits in terms of x, y. y has limits in terms of x. Here also we have one technique, one shortcut to identify which one we need to do first. Which variable has limits in terms of more variables. What I am saying, count the number of variables. Z has limits in terms of two variables, x and y. Y has limits in terms of one variable, that is x. So this is one small technique to identify with respect to which variable we need to do first. Which variable has variable limits, more number of variable limits. Which variable is having now? Z has limits in terms of x, y. That's why we need to do first, first
first with respect to z what is left over next y only this is 2 so first with respect to z next with respect to y at the end with respect to x by default we are going to do the integration with respect to one variable which has constant limits this one is n next task is we need to identify this one is first or this one is first because z has limits in terms of x y first we are going to do with respect to z what i am saying integral 0 to 1 0 to 1 minus x 0 to 1 minus x minus y dx dy dz this is given now i am going to integrate like this x equal to 0 to 1 y equal to 0 to 1 minus x z equal to 0 to 1 minus x minus y first with respect to z next with respect to y next with respect to x this is with respect to y at the end we need to do with respect to, to x last are you clear ma? this is order order of integration 1 2 3 so now I am going to integrate with respect to z first. If you integrate with respect to z first, x and y limits you are going to write as it is. You are not going to change anything. Now, while integrating with respect to z, if you have x, y, keep x and y constant. Integrate with respect to z only. But luckily here we don't have any integrand. So here you may think 1 will be there then what is integral 1 dz integral 1 dz is z integral 1 dz z now write the limits of z z equal to 0 to 1 minus x minus 1 with respect to z integration is over now with respect to y with respect to x we need to do before going to with respect to y first you need to substitute upper limit in the place of z next to lower limit right in the place of z upper limit what is upper limit ma 1 minus x minus y write that one first x equal to 0 to 1 y equal to 0 to 1 minus x right in the place of z upper limit what is upper limit 1 minus x minus y this is upper limit minus right in the place of z 0 0 dy dx next x equal to 0 to 1 y equal to 0 to 1 minus x if you subtract 0 from this term you will get same term that means the similar term you are going to get this one only into dy now i am going to integrate with respect to y at the end with respect to x clear ma with respect to y we need to do now before going to do with respect to y how to do with respect to y integration you know very well if you want to integrate with respect to y integrate by terms only what i mean to say if you have any terms other than y keep them as constant one how you treat one like that you need to treat x while integrating with respect to y treat them as constant who feel integration difficult ma for them i am giving one small technique here this integration is very easy because while integrating with respect to y you are not going to integrate x then what i am saying Wherever you are having constant, that means wherever you don't have y after integration, you will get their y. That is one small technique, very easy technique. What I am saying, if you don't know integration also, after integration, wherever you don't have y, there you will get y. Here do you have y? No, you will get y here. 
here do you have y no you will get y here so now simply substitute ma y x y integrate my y ma integral y dy what is integral y dy y square by 2 using one integration famous integration formula integral x power n dx equal to x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 integral y power 1 dy power 1 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 2 by 2 limits 1 0 to y equal to 0 to 1 minus x dx now you need to write in the place of y upper limit and in the place of y lower limit first i am writing upper limit ma so what is upper limit ma this is called upper limit this is called lower limit so write in the place of y 1 minus x because we did with respect to y now so write in the place of y 1 minus x ma 1 minus x in the place of y minus x into 1 minus x minus write in the place of y 1 minus x ma 1 minus x whole square by 2 whole dx this is upper limit ma minus lower limit i need to write you saw already if i write lower limit z equal to 0 what happened the same term i got so one step we are uh, reducing here by without writing 0 for 0 no need to write that one here clear one now simplify this one if you write lower limit also you will get same term that's why i am not writing so simplification x equal to 0 to 1 1 minus x minus x into 1 minus x minus into minus plus x into x x square minus 1 minus x whole square by 2 dx now simplify this one ma. x equal to 0 to 1 minus x minus x minus 2x 1 minus 2x plus x square minus 1 minus x whole square by 2 dx see here ma. this is in the form a square minus 2 x is a b b is 1 plus b square 1 square a square plus b square minus 2ab a square plus b square minus 2ab like this you can do or you can do in this order to get this form this is a square minus 2ab a is 1 here plus b square so a square minus 2ab plus b square a minus b whole square then a is 1 here b is x then what you will get x equal to 0 to 1 1 minus x whole square a is 1 b is x minus 1 minus x whole square by 2 dx so here 1 minus x whole square is common or if you take 1 minus x whole square common what you will get here you will get 1 minus 1 by 2 what is 1 minus 1 by 2 ma? 1 minus half you will get half after taking 1 minus x whole square common you will have 1 here minus 1 by 2 or 1 minus x whole square 1 here here half if you subtract half from 1 you will get half only so 1 by 2 1 minus x whole square dx this will be evaluated in two ways ma. one way expanding this one like this you can integrate term by term or you know this formula integral x power n x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 similar one here we are having x term integral x power n x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 easy way otherwise you can expand using this formula like this integrate 1 integrate x integrate x square separately then you may substitute upper limit and lower limit easy way is direct integration using this one integral 1 minus x whole square 1 minus x whole cube by 3 but one thing you need to remember here ma after integration 
the internal differentiation you need to write in the denominator. Whenever if you don't have only x, if you have only x square here, x cube by 3 over, but other than x here, we saw already integral y dy y square by 2 because only y is there. And differentiation of y is 1, no need to write 1 in the denominator, but here you don't have x only, you are having other than x, then differentiate this one, differentiation of 1, 0, differentiation of x, 1. So minus 1, you need to write here, and here 1 by 2 is there. And upper limit and lower limit, you know, ma, lower limit is 0, upper limit is 1. Now write in the place of x, 2, 3 is 6. That 6 I am writing here. 2 into minus 3, minus 6, minus 1 by 6. Now write in the place of x, 1 ma. If you write upper limit in the place of x, 1, 1 minus 1, 0. Write in the place of x, 0, 1 minus 0, whole cube. 1 minus 0, whole cube. 1 minus 0, 1, 1 cube, 1. So what you will get ma? 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Minus into minus plus. So finally answer is 1 by 6 ma. Minus 1 you will get minus into minus plus. Are you clear ma? Any doubts? Here two ways I said. If you want you can do like this. Here the small thing you need to remember is this minus don't forget. If you think that you may forget this minus, better way expand this one like this. Integrate. Same answer you will get, no problem. Okay. So now we need to evaluate this triple integration, ma. So before going to evaluate triple integration, first we need to identify the limits. So to identify the limits, see here, here these are limits of limits in terms of x, y. So which variable you are not finding in these limits, z. We are not getting z means the limits in terms of x, y are limits of z. Now, the leftover variables are y and x. Limits in terms of x are y. The leftover limits are belongs to x. Limits in terms of x, y, remember, they are limits of z. Limits in terms of x, they are limits of y. The leftover limits, constant limits are limits of x. Now the order of integration. So first integrate variable limits. These are variable limits. Which variable has more number of variables? Z variable has more number of variables in terms of limits. X, Y. So first with respect to Z. Next with respect to Y. Next with respect to X. The same order which is given in the question. In that order only we are going to integrate. For that, first I am integrating my integral x equal to 0 to 1, y equal to 0 to root 1 minus x square, integral z equal to 0 to root 1 minus x square minus y square, 1 by root of 1 minus x square minus y square minus z square dz first, next to dy next to dx. First I am doing with respect to z. So to integrate this one with respect to z, we will keep anyway x, y constant. By keeping x, y constant, we need to integrate this integral by integrating only z terms. So if you keep x and y as constant, immediately you will get one formula in integration in mind. What is that? That formula is integral 1 by root of a square minus x square dx sin inverse x by a. So one constant square minus variable square dx equal to sin inverse x by a. So to get this form, what I am doing, we are having anyway z square like x square, but we don't have a square. This complete term is a constant, constant square we need. For that what I am doing, I am writing this one as root whole square. If you write root whole square, square root get cancelled, you will have same term. Why we return like that? To apply this formula, to use this formula here. So I am keeping this total term as a. What is a here? 1 minus root 1 minus x square minus y square is a. 
a square minus z square. So in the place of x you will get z, in the place of a you will get root 1 minus x square minus y square. That formula I am applying ma. Integral x equal to 0 to 1, y equal to 0 to root 1 minus x square, sign inverse, x by a, in the place of x we are having z, z by a is this root term, root 1 minus x square minus y square from the limits, z equal to 0 to root 1 minus x square minus y square dy dx now write in the place of z upper limit ma next write in the place of z lower limit what happens if you write you know very well if you write in the place of z 0 sine inverse of 0 sine inverse of 0 is 0 sin inverse of 0 is 0. How? If you send this sin inverse to this side, you will get sin 0. What is sin 0? Sin 0 value will be sin inverse of 0. Sin 0 is 0. Similarly, if you write in the place of z root 1 minus x square minus y square, the same term you will get in numerator. Numerator denominator get cancelled, you will get 1 there. Sin inverse of 1. So to identify sin inverse of 1, you need to know where you will get, for which angle you will get in sin 1, for the pi by 2. You all know sin 90 is 1, that's why sin inverse of 1 is, sin inverse of 1 is 90. So now I am going to substitute the limits more. x equal to 0 to 1 y equal to 0 to root 1 minus x square. Now write in the place of z root 1 minus x square minus y square. Root 1 minus x square minus y square, numerator and denominator get cancelled. What you will get? Sin inverse 1. How you got this one? If you write in the place of z this time, this term, this term is same. The two terms get cancelled. Minus, lower limit, sin inverse of 0. 0 by anything 0, 0 by anything, that's why 0 I written, dy dx. As I written here, sin inverse of 0 value is, sin inverse of 0 value is 0, sin inverse of 1 is pi by 2, sin inverse of 1, pi by 2, minus 0 no need to write, pi by 2 minus 0, pi by 2, so pi by 2 dy, this becomes 0 dx. Now, pi by 2 is constant 1. Pi by 2 is constant. Then, integral 1 dy. What is integral 1 dy? Y. So, I am keeping pi by 2 here now. Pi by 2 here. Pi by 2 constant. What is left over term? Integral 1 dy. What is integral 1 dy? Integral x equal to 0 to 1, integral 1 dy is y, limits from y equal to 0 to root 1 minus x square dx. Now write, in the place of y, root 1 minus x square next to 0. If you write 0 anyway, you are going to get 0, no need to write lower limit. So write upper limit mark, x equal to 0 to 1 root 1 minus x square dx. There is one famous integration formula that I am going to use here. That formula is integral root of a square minus x square dx equal to x by 2 root of a square minus x square plus a square by 2 sin inverse x by a. This is formula I am going to use now. Integral root of a square minus x square. x by 2 root of a square minus x square plus a square by 2 sin inverse x by a. Here a square is 1 square. That means in the place of a you are having 1. In the place of x, x. Now I am going to substitute the values in that formula. Ma. So x by 2, x will be x. x by 2 root of 1 minus x square plus a square by 2 1 square by 2 1 by 2 
sin inverse x by a x by 1 limits x equal to 0 to 1 now write in the place of x upper limit 1 first in the place of x 0 lower limit x if you write in the place of x 1 what happens i am writing in the place of x 1 if you write here 1 1 by 2 root 1 minus 1 square 1 minus 1 0 0 into anything 0 plus 1 by 2 sine inverse Write in the place of x1, 1. 1 by 1, 1. Minus lower limit you need to substitute. If you write in the place of x0, what happens? Total term becomes 0. How? 0 into anything 0. Sign inverse of 0. Sign inverse of 0 is 0. So no need to write, substitute, upper limit here. Now, this term is 0. Sign inverse of, sign inverse of 1 is pi by 2. Pi by 2. So what is final term mark? 2 2 are 4, 4 2 are 8, 5 by 8. Any doubts you may express more. That formulas you need to keep in your mind so that the problem will be very easy and important also. So now again we need to convert the given trivial integral which is in Cartesian form to spherical polar coordinate system. So to convert, to transform, to transform to spherical coordinate system spherical polar coordinate system what we need to do you know what you need to substitute few assumptions few values in the place of x y z not assumptions you need to replace x with some value y with some value z with some value so x that you know r sin theta cos phi y r sin theta sin phi z with r, r cos theta r cos theta and Jacobian we all know man, r square sin theta so dx dy dz will be replaced with by r square sin theta dx dy dz dx dy dz and the limits of integration here Spherical polar coordinate system we need to convert here root in root you won't get negative values all positive that means this is positive quadrant so generally the positive quadrant if you see that is from 0 to 90 complete pure positive quadrant that's why theta varies from 0 to pi by 2 and phi is also from 0 to pi by 2 coming to r here 1 minus x square minus y square means the radius is 1. That's why r is from 0 to 1 only. r is from 0 to 1. So these limits we are going to use to evaluate given integral by converting to spherical polar coordinate system. For that, what we are doing? Integral 0 to 1, integral 0 to root 1 minus x square, integral 0 to root 1 minus x square minus y square dx dy dz by root of 1 minus I am writing this one like this x square plus y square plus z square so why I am writing like that if you write these all substitutions and if you evaluate this one that value will be this one x square plus y square plus z square will be r square now write the given limits but I am, we are going to do first with respect to r that's why I, am, I will write r limits at the end first pi limits at the end here theta equal to 0 to pi by 2 pi equal to 0 to pi by 2 theta equal to 0 to pi by 2 r equal to 0 to 1 dx dy dz you can write this one r square sin theta dr d theta d phi by root of 1 minus r square first i am going to do with respect to r mark. for that what i am doing integral pi equal to 0 to pi by 2 theta equal to 0 to pi by 2 0 to pi by 2 because this is positive quadrant 0 to 90 degrees 
integral r equal to 0 to 1 r square by root of 1 minus r square sin theta here we are going to do with respect to r d theta d phi before going to do with respect to r what we need to do here actually if you have r here there is a formula in integration integral f dash of x by f of x we can but we are having r square then we will try to get the similar term in numerator which is we are having in denominator denominator 1 minus r square to get 1 minus r square here 1 minus r square 1 minus okay ma so then what happens 1 minus r square minus 1 1 minus 1 how much if you want don't keep bracket here directly 1 minus 1 minus r square plus 1 minus 1 get cancelled then what you will have r square only so to get this form we are adding and subtracting 1 then what happens ma integral pi equal to 0 to pi by 2 theta equal to 0 to pi by 2 if we split this one into two fractions like this integral r equal to 0 to 1 1 by root 1 minus r square minus 1 minus r square by 1 minus r square by root 1 minus r square dr d theta d pi so if you simplify we get like this one pi equal to 0 to pi by 2 theta equal to 0 to pi by 2 the term will be like this 1 minus r square by root 1 minus r square 1 minus r square by root 1 minus r square this 1 minus r square can be written as root 1 minus r square into root 1 minus r square 1 root 1 minus r square get cancer so what is left over this one is a very clear mark this is the formula integral 1 by root 1 minus x square dx equal to sin inverse x that we know so that's why here what you will get sin inverse r minus this is the problem we discussed already integral root of a square minus x square dx x by 2 root of a square minus x square plus a square by 2 sin inverse x by a clear ma now apply that formula x is r r by 2 r by 2 root of 1 minus r square plus a square is 1 1 by 2 sin inverse r by 1 limits from 0 to 1 d theta d pi 1 here we will have sin theta also here sin theta also we are adding sin theta sin theta clear ma now integral pi equal to 0 to pi by 2 theta equal to 0 to pi by 2 now write in the place of r1 ma first write in the place of r1 if you write in the place of r1 what happens if you write in the place of r1 sin inverse 1 pi by 2 if you write here in the place of r1 what happens this term completely becomes 0 if you write here in the place of r1 pi by 2 you will get that means minus into plus minus pi by 4 1 by 2 into pi by 2 pi by 4 d theta that is sin theta d theta d pi pi by 2 minus pi by 4 if you take 4 lcm 2 pi minus pi pi so if you simplify this one pi by 4 you will get 4 lcm next integral sin theta d theta integral sin minus cos integral sin minus cos minus cos theta pi equal to 0 to pi by 2 limits from 0 to pi by 2 d pi now write in the place of this minus i am writing here ma minus pi by 4 pi equal to 0 to pi by 2 cos 90 you know ma 
cos pi by 2 0 cos 0 1 then what do you get 0 minus 1 d pi 0 minus 1 minus 1 minus into minus plus pi by 4 integral 1 d phi 5 integral 1 d phi 5 limits 0 to pi by 2 so finally what you will get pi by 4 into pi by 2 that is pi square by 8 are you clear ma? this is the way we will convert Cartesian to polar coordinate spherical polar coordinate system any doubts you may express ma?